Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome to this HUD8 networking tutorial on Cisco Reverse Telnet, or as I like to call it, the poor man's remote console server solution. Now, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you an incredibly simple but yet effective way to console in to another Cisco device or any device that has a console port from a Cisco router using the auxiliary port on that Cisco router. Now, let me give you some background. We recently had to ship some equipment from Washington, D.C., to Australia. So definitely not a day trip. And once that equipment re, re, uh, was received in Australia, there were some concerns about the configuration and we were not able to remotely access the device. So in other words, it could have been an ACL, it could have been you know, a user account, some setting was preventing us from accessing these devices that had been configured locally and shipped all the way to Australia. Well, we didn't really have any boots on the ground, so to speak, or smart hands that we could leverage to console into the equipment. And that is where a coworker of mine by the name of Mar, who is our layer one guru, and this guy is an absolute magician when it comes to layer one cables, pinouts, you name it, this guy can do it. He's electricity, the whole nine yards. So long story short, he did some research and had come to me and said, hey, could we do something like this, the Cisco reverse Telnet? So we took a look at it, we worked it out, and we hit some bumps along the way. And I wanna talk about some of those bumps. And I'm gonna show you how to get this set up. Now, first things first, what is it going to require? Well, you're first going to require a Cisco rollover cable. So this is that, you know, they call it the, the, the blue cable is typically what you're here it called. It could be called a rollover cable, a rolled cable. Uh, and if we take a look at Cisco's documentation, it will actually show us the pinout for the rolled cable. And it's rolled because basically what you have are the exact opposite. So pin eight here is going to be pin one, and then seven is going to be two. And they, they've got the same thing down here, but it's a little harder to see. So you can see it's like the brown is the brown here. So eight is one, seven is two, uh, six is three, five is four, and then four is five, so forth and so on. And so that's that Cisco rollover cable. So if you've got a device that's at a remote location and you can get onto a Cisco router at that location, you can gain access via the console port to the other device. And again, it could be any other device. We tested a 2960, a 9300 Catalyst, a 3650, a 3850. I'm gonna show you in my lab here on an ASA 5506X. We tested a 5510 uh, ASA router. So we did a whole bunch of testing to see what it was going to look like. Now. The other thing that you're going to need, <clears throat> excuse me, is a router with an auxiliary port. And so that's what I'm showing you here in this diagram is this is just the back of a 3925 or a 3945. And the auxiliary port is typically located right above what would typically be your console port. And so that port right there, port three, is the aux port. And you can see you've got the USB uh, console connection that you can make there with the uh, USB, I think the mini USB is what they call it. And then just with the RJ45, right? So what you're doing, and this is what I'm gonna be doing in my lab, if this is my ASA 5506, this is all I'm doing. I'm taking that blue cable, I'm plugging it into the auxiliary port. In fact, let me do this here to kind of drive it home. So I'm, I'm taking that blue rollover cable and I'm plugging it into, and I think the uh, on the 5506 it's over here, the console port, right? So I go from the auxiliary port on the router to the console port on whatever the device might be, 
right? So you ship a device to a remote location, you've got a router there. If you can get on that router and you don't have smart hands available to you, or maybe it's going to be more complex uh, network engineering that's going to be required on this remote device, whatever the case may be, simply have ship your devices down there with a rollover cable, right? That way, not only do they not have to have the cable at the site, you're shipping it to the site. They have that cable. So then you tell them, hey, plug one end to the, uh, into the auxiliary port on router X and the other end into the console port of the device that maybe that device crashed. Maybe, again, it's misconfigured, whatever the case may be. And this really, I mean, it's this is an amazing thing that he found. And I'll be honest with you, prior to Mar coming to me to talk to me about this solution and to kind of say, hey, how can we get this to work for this use case here? I had never heard of this. I had never heard of this. And so that's one of the great things about working with Mars. He's always looking at all of these different things uh, that really become valuable. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's get this set up. So again, here I am, I'm on a 3945 router, completely unconfigured. And this is how easy it is to set this up. So if you had a router that was already configured and if it already had a loopback address, you're pretty much done right? But I'm going to set it up from scratch. So we're going to go into global config. I'm just going to call this R23945E. I'm going to say no IP domain lookup. I'm just setting some things up here. Line con zero, logging synchronous. And so those are just a couple basic settings so that we don't have uh, output coming from the console line and I'm connected to the console line of this box, but we tested it. You can SSH into the router and then issue the telnet command to the local loopback. So there's my basic configuration information. So the first thing we want to do, we've got the blue cable plugged into the auxiliary port on this router. All I have to say is show line and that's going to show me the auxiliary port it's also going to show me the transmit and receive rate that's set 9600 excuse me to set to 9600 right and that is the default so all you would have to do is go into global config go into line aux zero and say transport input telnet right now remember i commented about the loopback address and absolutely we need a loopback address so if we don't have a loopback address I would configure one. Now, we also tested this to an interface address on the box and it worked. So in other words, if I had gig zero zero configured on this router, I was able to telnet to and on the same router issuing the telnet command to the interface on this router, I was able to get to that remote session to get that session stood up. So I don't have an interface configured here. So let's do what you traditionally see done is you've got some kind of a loopback address that you're using. So let's go ahead and say interface loopback zero. Now I can pick any address. We tried a slash eight, a slash 24 and a slash 32. They all worked. So I'm just going to simply use an a PIPA address. I'm going to say 169.254. And again, because we're not routing this address, it's a local address on this router that I only need for this instance, I'm just gonna use a 169.254.1 and it will say dot two for router two. And I'll make it a slash 32. At this point, that is all you need. You've got the rollover cable connected to the auxiliary port. We can see the line, right? The line number specifically is what we're really interested in here because that becomes very, very important. So I'm connected the rollover cable to the auxiliary port. It's connected to line one and I've got a loopback address on the router. The other end of the rollover cable is connected into the console port of whatever device I'm trying to connect to. And so here we go. All I have to say is Telnet to the loopback address on this router. And when you look at a number of uh, the discussion posts that are out there and things like that, this is where it might become a little confusing. It's, well, wait a minute, am I telling on the device that I'm connecting to the console port on or does that device need to have a loopback? No, it's all on this router with this auxiliary port connected with a rollover cable 
1.2, and this is also something, you'll sometimes see it with a colon. We found that on the ISR G twos that we were testing with, and we tested a 2901, we tested a 2911, we tested the 3945 that you're looking at right here. And when we did that, the colon followed by sort of the secret sauce, which is going to be a port number. But it's important to know that the port number is 2000 plus the line number. So in our instance, it would be 2001, but what we found in our testing is it doesn't work with the colon. So it works with the space. And that is literally all that's required. Is I say Telnet to the loop back on this router to which I'm connected into the auxiliary port with a rollover cable, and then it's 2000 plus whatever the auxiliary port line number is. So if this was 88, it would be Telnet 169.254.1.2 space 2088. And again, here it's very simple. It's just one, so it's 2001, and I'm connected. It's that easy to get this working. So for those of you out there with a remote site that don't have a remote console server of some, of some type, this is a phenomenal solution to gain console access. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what's going to happen here. You'll notice, well, okay, Travis, where's the prompt? Just hit enter a few times. And I'm now on this 5506X Cisco firewall. So here we go. Let me go ahead and say reload to prove to you that I'm in the console port of this firewall. Because if I'm on the console port, when I reload this firewall, I should not get kicked off. I should stay connected and everything should work as if I had my Mac or my PC connected into the console port of the device. And that is exactly what you're going to see here is I'm going to see all of the reboot messages that are going to come up and I am using the auxiliary port on the back of this 3945E router. And so again, let's take a step back. If you had the router at the location and you can reach that router and that router already has a loopback address, any loopback address, when you type Telnet to the local loopback address of the router that you're on and then put in that secret sauce, which is the port number 2000 plus whatever the auxiliary port line number is, you could with a rollover cable successfully console into any other device at that location. And so what we're talking about is now shipping a rollover cable that's ready to go. And think about this as well. You could even put a coupler on the end of that rollover cable if you needed to extend the distance at that remote site. You could put a Cat5 coupler on there and then you could extend that out. And then you could use a straight through cable as the extension cord, right? As sort of the extension to that device. And we looked at that as well. Obviously we were, you know, sitting two feet from the equipment, but it works, right? It works. So this device is gonna come up and what I wanna show you, and actually I could show it to you right now. So you might be asking, okay, that's great. I'm connected. How do I get disconnected from that ASA 5506X? Well, I was going to wait for it to come up here. We'll see how much longer we've got. But let's just say, so here's how you do it. You do, you hold down control shift six and then let go and then hit X. Now, if you're like me, I have this habit where I think that's great. I've got my prompt back. I'm off the device. So I typically always hit enter. It's just, I just a habit. I've always done this. So I'll hit enter a few times, but look what happens. It resumes the connection back to the device right? So now I'm back on the console port. So here's what you need to do. We already know the line number of the, aux of the auxiliary port connection. It's one. So you do control shift six, let go, and then just hit X on your keyboard. And then you say clear line, and then whatever the auxiliary port line number is. It's that easy. Clear line one, confirm. And there we go. Okay. And you can see right there, connection to cl uh, close to for uh, by foreign host. And so that's it, we're disconnected. If I wanted to reconnect back to that firewall, simply recall that telnet command, hit enter, oh, and the connection's refused. 
it looks like, let me say show line, we might have, let me make sure I've got this clear line one, and we want to connect in, and so then I'm going to recall that telnet command, and there we go. And so you can see we've got a whole bunch of stuff spewing on the screen uh, because I had hit enter enough times that it said yes. And so what's happening here is this is my own my own sort of failure here. I hit when I was hitting the enter showing you, oh, hey, it puts you back on the device. It went into the scripted configure the ASA firewall setup. And so now we're going to have I've hit enter a million times. And so that's what we're going to see. But again, if I want to disconnect control shift six release and then X. Ah, and again, so I hit enter again, control shift six, X, and then immediately clear line one. And that's it. That is how easy it is to do this. And we wanted to document this because we've got other individuals on the team that we were explaining this to. We did a quick little tutorial. And again, this is an amazing way to maybe save yourself if you've got gear at a remote site and something goes down and there's a Cisco router with an aux port at that location and you might not have the smart hands there to jump on and do the troubleshooting. If you've got a rollover cable, you can make this happen. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, I had no idea that you could do this. I had never seen this before Mar had come over and said, hey, I've got an idea as to how we can get on this device in Australia. Right. Think about that. From Washington, D.C., we're consoled into or we're SSH into a router in Australia. And then we tell that using the aux port through a rollover cable to the console port of any other device we had there. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've got a lot out of this and hopefully maybe this will save you some time one day. All right. Have a great day and thanks for watching.